welcome back to the Art of Boat Building, uh, smelter edition. Uh, sometimes in boat building, you have to make a thing to build a thing to put on your boat. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to build a smelter to melt the lead for the ballast keel. So stay tuned. My name is Bob Emser. I'm a sculptor and a boat builder. My sculptures have always been inspired by nautical and aeronautical imagery. In fact, sometimes people passing by my studio would ask if I'm building a boat. I've always enjoyed the artistry of wooden boats. It seems like I've been building boats for over 40 years, and now I'm building sculptures that float. Welcome to the art of boat building. Welcome back. Today we need to work on building a smelter so that we can uh, melt our lead in order to cast our ballast keel. Uh, so the first thing we need to consider is uh, what kind of container this needs to be and how big the container needs to be. So in order to figure out the size of the container, the first thing we need to do is to figure out how many gallons of lead uh, we need to fit in a container. So, we know that lead weighs 0.409 pounds per cubic inch, and a gallon holds 231 cubic inches. Uh, so therefore, uh, lead weighs 93.78 pounds per gallon. Now, if we take the weight of what our keel needs to be, which is 585, and divide it by 93.78, then we end up with 6.2 gallons. So to be on the safe side, we'll say we need to be have six and a half to seven gallons uh, of capacity in our smelter. So the next question then is, what kind of a container uh, can we find that will hold seven gallons or so of molten lead? So taking a page out of uh, my friends Steve and Alex from Acorn to Arabella, they use an old air compressor tank. Now the great thing about air compressor tanks is they're built to withstand a lot of pressure and they're generally a fairly thick gauge of steel. So the first thing I did was just look around for a used air compressor that I could apprehend the tank for. Turns out used air compressors are still $50 and up. So what I discovered was that Harbor Freight sold a air compressor tank, a portable tank, um, and on sale I got it for $30. Now it's an 11-gallon tank, so it has more than enough capacity for our lead. So that's what I decided to make the smelter out of. I started by removing the air hose connection and cutting off the handle and the base. Turning the inlet down, I discovered that the seam for the tank was on the opposite side. Using the seam as a center line, I then measured five inches off of it to give me a 10 inch door. With a cutoff wheel on my grinder, I then cut the two long sides, leaving the ends intact. After centering a couple of utility hinges over the slot, I welded them in place. After welding the handle back in place, I then cut the ends so that the door would open.
I use the flap wheel on my grinder to clean up any sharp edges. All right, uh, <clears throat> now we've got the smelter all done. You can see I just took some uh, scrap angle iron and uh, welded some legs on there. Um, so I think it's a good height to be able to uh, get the lead in there and so forth. So there is um, where the air connection for this tank was down here, which is a half inch uh, pipe thread. I'll get some uh, pipe fittings and uh, figure out uh, what length I need once I get it all kind of set up uh, for the, um, um, so the, for the pour shoot of, for the metal. So uh, next thing is to get some pipe fittings and get that hooked up. I started with a half inch nipple and used a half inch to one inch cut. I then added a street elbow. Then a six inch, one inch pipe to the elbow. I later attached a six foot, one inch pipe to the lead chute. Here's the setup. Now we're ready to give it a test. We tested the smelter out and it worked uh, uh, exactly the way that I was hoping it would. Uh, we figured out that the uh, six foot um, chute is uh, plenty uh, short enough uh, and also gets the mold far enough away from the fire. So, so I think we're pretty much uh, good to go there. One of the things that we found out though is, as you uh, may remember in, in episode three, where I was casting the uh, lead ballast in the center board. Uh, I had talked about the uh, lead that I had gotten, which was uh, spent ammunition from an indoor shooting range. So we put that in the smelter, and what we discovered very quickly was that uh, we weren't going to have enough lead. So uh, that put things on hold a little bit until we procured uh, the remaining amount. Uh, but one of the things that I did in order to figure out how much lead I actually needed was I went ahead and cleaned up all of the other lead. So the way I did that was much the way that was seen uh, in uh, episode three. I took a, um, uh, the cast iron pan and the turkey fryer and I melted them down in small batches and then uh, cast them into uh, the ingot molds. Uh, with that last ingot, uh, that brings the total lead that I have here to uh, just a little bit over 477 pounds. I need uh, 585 pounds, so that makes me uh, short uh, around 107 pounds or so. So uh, fortunately, I uh, found a place that I can uh, get some more lead tomorrow. Um, and I think what I'll do is probably buy 120, 130 pounds uh, so to make sure that I have enough. Well, that's it. I think we've got everything set up and ready to go. Uh, got our lead prepared. We've got enough firewood. I happen to have this uh, tripod uh, gantry that I'll be able to put a chain hoist on so that when uh, the uh, lead has been cast, we'll have a way of lifting it out of the ground easily. Um, so we'll have to hope that we have as beautiful day as we do today uh, when uh, my crew comes to help me cast it. So, well, thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you next time.